Okay, so tonight we are continuing our Astonishing Swordsmen and Sorcerers of Hyperborea campaign in Zimbala. And um, hmm, let's see. I think something happened interesting last week. Oh, yeah, everybody got captured again. So, <laughs> so you guys, um, you know, had a very successful uh, infiltration um, into the uh, car caravans, blah, blah, into Aramis's place. And uh, it was going well um, until he, he uh, realized that the assassins were there and, and you were now uh, taken captive again. So you, you think it's been roughly four days. It's hard to say, uh, you know, because the sun is not coming up and down so much, but you see it going across the sky. Um, after they had taken you um, captive, you, you woke up to find yourself somewhere in, in some kind of a ruin um, through just the nature of you know, hearing voices and stuff, you know that you're all there, um, but you're not in the same space like, they, like the you were before. Each of you is in kind of a small cell, we'll call it. Um, there's no bars or anything in front of you. It's basically a section, possibly Tan would recognize something like this as maybe something that monks or priests might uh, might uh, meditate or or pray in. Uh, but these are very ancient, the ancient, ancient ruins. Um, you've been chained. Uh, each of you have been chained to the walls. There's a hole about maybe two foot deep and about a foot wide dug in front of you. And each day, a soldier, we'll call him for lack of a better word, one of the guards basically, uh, dumps a bucket of water in, in the hole and you rush to, to scoop as much out with your hands as you can before it gets absorbed into the ground. You've not been fed. Um, you're naked, you know, you were stripped of everything. Um, and you're definitely being watched. You know, there's, there's several of these guards here with spears. Um, if you start to try to talk to each other, they will, you know, stop you. Uh, so you, you're, you're probably festering a bit and uh, not very happy, I would imagine. <laughs> maybe you're maybe all right, but I don't know. Um, when uh, you hear a familiar voice, um, the voice of Aramis, and... Uh, you can hear him walking. You know, each of you catch sight of him a little bit as he's kind of walking the path in front of these cells that you've been uh, restrained in. And he says, uh, so, the Church of Helios has sent you to kill me. And I think I know why. But you must understand that what I did, I did for the people of Zimbala. Those beasts would kill in the street anybody, even somebody of upper class like me if I was out. This way, only the foreigners get killed when they come. And who cares about them? A few foreigners just, I mean, I understand that you came in that group, but if you had just not meddled, not been part of it, you would have been fine. But now, now the church clearly sees me as a threat and not the hero that I am. I won't blame you, but you're going to be the ones that are gonna help me. I have information. I know what they're up to. And I was planning to send some men in to take care of it. But now I am under suspicion and I am being threatened. So I must keep all my men with me. So you will help me. You will find out what's going on here. These slaves, escaped slaves, have some kind of a leader off in a, a ruined palace deep in the desert. They speak of him or them. Their rulers, they call them. So there must be multiple. You'll go. You'll kill them. You'll bring me back the heads. Then I can present them to the Church of Helios and show that I am the true hero that I am. So as this is, you know, speech is going on, uh, we can kind of cut to the characters. You guys can integrate characters and uh, give us a little thought of how you're feeling or if you want to do anything um, besides listening to this guy. Um, and I will start with Nikki. Finister 
is glad they're not dead, but really baffled as to how her guess <laughs> at what was going on seems to have worked out. And she's just going to listen to him and try to figure out the best way to get her and her friends out of this safely. Um, as she is naked and chained, she's not going to try anything just yet. And I am playing Finesta the Bard. Excellent. Um, in, in a cell, who knows next to you, maybe two cells down, is uh, Tan, or Tony's character, Tan. And hearing the voice of the man who stabbed him and he thought his last lifeblood was dripping onto that carpet in that nice apartment. He hears that voice and he has the last few drops of, of the water on his lips. <clears throat> he spits it out on the ground and he listens to the uh, pitch given by the uh, man who he knows and has seen and dealt with these type of people before. Some call them ruthless. Some of them call them businessmen. Some of them call them evil. But he listens and listens to the end and he raises his head up and not knowing if he can see the man, he just cries out, I'll do it. I'll go. That is Excellent. Tan Rillos, the pearl owner. Excellent. Uh, I'm going to skip you for a second, Crystal. Uh, and Kenneth. Uh, Uhtred's kind of pacing as best he can in his small cell. Uh, I know he's chained, and so he's kind of doing a two or three foot pace. And he's frustrated, you know. He's a he's a winner of the arena, and here he is in this small little cell. He's he thought that his life would be so much different than this. And he feels he should be treated so much better. He wanted so much more for himself. So seeing that he's being offered a choice or an opportunity to, to, to live and maybe redeem himself, he, he definitely, he, he's, he's definitely interested. And he says, yes, yes, I will do this for you. Excellent. And Crystal, uh, Chris is playing a different character because her other character is currently uh, infiltrating the the, the caravan Sierra. Sierra. So tell us a little bit about your new character, Crystal. Uh, chain to the wall is uh, this rather uh, large man, uh, large uh, blonde beard, long blonde hair. <clears throat> uh, he calls out uh, to. Um, Artemis and says, does this still apply to all of your prisoners, Artemis? Or am I a special case? I think they'll need you for, for sure. This is not going to be easy. All of you are being spared. Very well. Do you still have my hammer? You hear him spit on the ground, and then he continues, and he says, my men will take you out in the direction you need to be, and they will drop you off with your gear. Do not try anything funny. If you come back to Zambala without the heads of these leaders or proof of what was going on to clear my name, you will be killed on sight. And then you hear him walk away. So you, you've got, um, you know, there's, there's a little bit of shuffling as things move around and, and these soldiers who are, uh, you know, brandishing spears um, kind of come one by one to each of your cells and kind of bring you out um, chained together. Um, and they start to march you. They, they are on camels uh, and they start to march you out into the desert. Um, after, uh, after a little bit, they kind of stop and... Uh, they drop a large uh, like package, like it looks like a tarp that's got a bunch of stuff in it um, on the ground. Then you guys go forward like another 
you know, four or 500 yards. And then they, then they, they, the one guard who's in the lead kind of lets go at the end of the chain and tosses the, the key on the ground. And he says, your gear is back there. Well, I kind of hope you succeed so that the boss gets cleared. I don't really like assassins. So if I see you again, we have our own personal thing to settle. And then he, he, he says, head out in that direction. He points, you'll find the palace. And then he the, the his men and him take off on the camels, kind of going back. Okay, they kind of go off to the side. I mean, being that you guys are adventurers and you probably you know understand how to travel, especially because you have a barbarian with you, um, you know that he's pointing um, generally to the uh, to the south uh, southeast uh, is the direction that he's telling you to travel. They turn and go directly north. Is his face uh, open where you can see his face and get a good look at his face? Oh yeah, yeah. 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 This is the guy that cracked you over the head. Oh, perfect. Yeah, Tan definitely just, he doesn't say anything, but he definitely re remembers the man and stares straight at him when he gives that last speech. Yeah, he's one uh, of Mrs. Uh, guards. Yeah, go ahead. So you guys are basically... Same, yep. Was this be the same guy that did what, what happened to me? No, you were with a different group. Oh, darn. They were there, though. No, this guy is one of our uh, Aramis's personal guards. After he rides off, Tan will look over at Pian and Red and go, did any of you see what they did with Zul? Did they remove her body? I don't, I lost consciousness before. I, I think the man killed her though. Did any of you see though? We didn't see, we saw her body on the floor, but they knocked us over the heads before they took us to the cells. So the last thing we saw was her body and yours um, on the floor of Aramis's room. Well, let's hope that he has her somewhere else, that she was the one that tried to do the deed to the man, so maybe he's got her somewhere else. And I think so. I, I think I saw her chest rising and falling faintly. It's possible she was under some sort of sleep magic, but I don't know for sure. He is a sly one, but I will not underestimate him again. No, I don't think any of us will. And now we should put our clothes on. As they're talking, uh, Bali has already grabbed the, uh, the key and is undoing his cuffs. He says, he found a way to kill me yet. As his eyes burn with stinging sweat being out in this desert. It just seems like every path for Bali leads him to nowhere. So you guys would would recognize Bali from the from the caravan, you know, as as one of the uh, you know also one of the people promoted to to scout near the end of the of the trip. Oh, he's uh, from my caravan, a merchant caravan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You recognize him from being from your caravan. Um, so yeah, I mean, you, he wasn't part of your scout group, but you you would know him as like he was with the caravan for several months. Um, you know, at least I don't remember wh how long you were with the caravan, but. Um, you know, you, you definitely know who he is. And, uh, you know, he just, you know, probably through, you know, quick, but, you know, he never got paid either. Never, you know, was able to find what's his face. Uh, uh, I forgot the guy's name, no, Dominus. <laughs> um, but there's a whole story if you want to tell them your story, Crystal, or not. Um, but either way, you know him, you know, as, as, a, as, a, as a good guy, if you will. <laughs> Um, when you check the gear, uh, go ahead. Sorry, I just had a good fellow. A good fellow. Okay. Uh, so when you check the gear, it's it, your weapons and stuff are there. You there's a couple. There's a skin of water for each of you, full, um, and they're uh, in your armor and stuff. But all of your gold and stuff is gone. So they they took every penny, but they but they left you your weapons, which is nice. Did they leave me my flute? <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, I'll say so because you need it, right, to do magic. Hold on. I could chant or something, but I like my flute. Um, is it valuable? No, it was just the flute from the... It's, it's not is, super valuable, just my flute. Is Valkyria stuff there as well? No. No, and neither okay. is Zul's. Zul's stuff is not there either. Like, literally, your stuff is there. 
Oh, I lost your bowl. Bottles. We lost the bowl because she gave me the bowl. Oh. Oh, you were carrying her stuff? Okay, then it would be there. Uh, but not the bowl. The bowl is definitely valuable. They, they were freaking out. Sorry, I didn't realize that that's right. I forgot that you were carrying her stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you were carrying Val's stuff, it's it's mm, what they have given you her stuff now. I guess they wouldn't have known up. the difference. If there's if there's things that look like that it would have been fine for you. Yeah, I guess they would have given to you. They, they're not they wouldn't have taken time because they're just weapons and stuff, right? There's nothing specific. But anything that looked valuable, they took. So if you had okay. any jewels or or you know, yeah, gold or the bowl was looks valuable, that stuff's all gone. But any yeah. weapons that Val might have had, like the whip, I think she had a whip, right? Um yeah. actually you don't have the whip. Um well, yeah, 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 you would have the whip. Um, there was a whip. There was like a dagger, whatever weapons that you had. Okay. Meanwhile, back at the uh, back at the uh, tavern, uh, you have Artemis like with the bowl, like here, have some fruit. And he like saying the magical word, and Bell is like, "God damn it!" <laughs> <laughs> well, it's unfortunate that we find ourselves out here in the desert, but it sure is nice to have Bali here, another warrior. Ah, yes. I recognize you from the caravan. I suppose none of you ever managed to find that other guy either. Dominus? Dominus? Yes. No, we never did. He, we were actually looking for him when we fell upon the caravan, sorry, and all that mess. Yes, I, uh, I spoke with Dominus when we arrived here. He said that Artemis was often looking for uh, some kind of guards. Thought I'd make a good recruit. Well, they did take me out on a mission, I guess, to test me out. They sent a group of us uh, up into the hills, but uh, my group was ambushed by uh, an unknown number of, of uh, these cannibals. I reported back to the group and they told me they would report to the council at night when I went to sleep. So I woke up the next day in prison, chained to the wall, unable to escape. Well, we are free now, and I can almost guarantee you that I, for one, will not be uh, returning the heads to Aramis. I mean, only if they're to join head. his head as well. The only yes. head I plan on taking is Aramis himself. Mm -hmm. He shall fill the wrath of my hammer. And Bali puts up a large, you know, uh, Thor looking war hammer. Tan cinches the last notch on his belt and he looks at the rest of them and he goes, we can talk as we travel. They said to go this way. Yeah, let's see what, what awaits us. Yes, you're right, Tan. Let's move. Okay, yeah, so you gather up your gear, um, you know, and put on your armor. We wanted you to drink some of the water, get yourselves kind of situated. Um, and you travel uh, a few miles, you know, um, and when you kind of crest uh, a bit of a hill, you, you kind of look out and you can see this. Okay, uh, out in front of you. So this is uh, a ruin uh, of what appears to be, it was probably a pretty opulent uh, palace. Um, when it was, uh, you know, not destroyed. <laughs> uh, the sands uh, have seemed to have taken it. You know, it looks like uh, you're a bit of a distance. You're further, you're, you're a bit further away than this picture probably shows you. Um, you can actually see that there's pretty steady uh, traffic. Uh, you can see footprints and stuff going up to that front area that looks like it's been pretty freshly dug out. Um, you can actually see, um, I think for the picture they want to show the place looking better than it is you know, cooler. Um, the sands actually are pushed up to the side. So it's, it's almost completely buried uh, in the front and the door is like dug out. 
Um, so you could, uh, the sand dunes come up around, like the, the front of it is pretty open, as you can see. Um, and you can see on the sides, like the, the dunes come up almost to the towers. Um, as you're kind of looking out across this, this palace, um, there doesn't seem to be any like guards or movement or anything uh, from this distance that you can see. Um, so you can, you're pretty far away. Like I said, you could approach it from any direction. Uh, th this is just the picture that I have. You can come How straight on. Are they, uh, over the sand dunes? Um, if you kind of like look around, you know, kind of look around to the sides, the, on the, um, let me just give you some cardinal directions to make life easier. Let me open my map up so I can give you some, make it easy. Um, okay, so if you're, if you're looking at it, so this, this front door is the, the east side. Um, on, the west, on the south side, the sand dunes come up almost all the way to the top of the walls. Um, and actually, you're on a hill, so you can see, and also in the back. So basically, what's exposed of this place is primarily the east side, which you're looking at, and the north side looks pretty exposed as well. Um, the, the south side and the, the west side are almost completely uh, covered in sand. So they're pretty high. They're as high as the walls, which are, whoosh, I think, about 20, 30 feet tall. Um, Tan wants to, with these always footprint travel, can he take, um, try to figure out different of maybe what amount of people he thinks it is going in and out, maybe or the size of group? Um, I mean, it looks like a lot. Uh, if you want to get like right up to it, you might be able to get a better rough number, but you can tell that this is, this is like, um, actually you've seen something very similar to this, uh, just outside of, um, Zambala. Um, where the, the slaves all kind of come out and they kind of join together and walk into the city. It kind of looks like that. Like it looks like there's probably, you know, 20, 30, 40 people possibly. Uh, but it's hard to say because it's back and forth. But it's not like two people. That's just my point. Right. Do we see any activity currently? No. No, if you wait for like about 10, 15 minutes, um, there is no activity at all. It's pretty, uh, and it is actually, that makes sense, I guess. It's actually kind of the nighttime. You know, you know it's not really nighttime, but it's nighttime. It's it's about, uh, you know, uh, seven would be equivalent to like 7 p.m. So the sun, of course, is still in the sky because you've got almost entirely daylight because it's summer, um, but it's kind of like moved down a bit. So um, it's, it's not like the dead of night, but it's definitely like evening. And, oh, actually, no, that wouldn't happen yet. I was going to say you didn't hear the bell ring, but <laughs> you didn't hear the bell ring because it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> um, we spent all those days in the cell, cells. Yep. Are we at full hit, po hit, uh, hit points? Yeah, everybody's healed up. The sand is up to the walls. Is it high enough that we could actually sneak up once, like say the southern side, and actually look over the walls or see into the yeah. portals? I mean, you think so? Yeah, you have to get over there to see, but yeah, you think so? You're kind of on a hill, but you're not like super high. You're like just above it because you're sort of sand dune. But yeah, it looks that way. It looks like you could probably get get uh, entrance. Actually. Um, you can tell that, I mean, uh, clearly from here, that there, this was probably maybe had multiple floors and they're kind of collapsed and stuff. So you could probably get up to like one of the upper floors, you think, by climbing on the sand and then then possibly gain entrance. It's hard to say until you get closer. But the answer is yes. Like you wouldn't necessarily have to walk in the front door. You could probably climb up the sand dunes from what you can tell, either from the southern side or the western side. That's a good idea, Uchard. I don't think we want to go directly in by the front door. Let's no. be a little more discreet. So should we walk around and see what we can see from the other side, one of the other sides? Yes, I say we check every side, even though we don't see guards on this side, they may have guards posted elsewhere. Okay, so yeah, you're like quarter mile out. I mean, if you just wanna do like, a, I'll stay a, de a decent amount away from it, just do like a big loop to try to be safe, to not be seen. Uh, you can definitely do that. It'll take a while, of course, because you're going to, you know, diameter of the circle. But um, you probably have nothing but time right now, right? So <laughs> uh, let's see. There is box text. It says, 
the ruins of an old palace rise from the desert sands. Uh, the surviving walls, jaggedly rising, uh, oh, 15 to 18 feet, okay, so that one, are matte amber made of mud brick and stone with green sandstone stripes running through them. Uh, the corners are, are tight circles of discolored stonework. Uh, loopholes are spaced strategically along the walls. Uh, I've been seeing a history of battle, so you know to shoot arrows there. Uh, the upper stories of the palace are blasted ruins, notwithstanding. Uh, the craftsmanship of all you can see is exceptional, despite the obvious degradation. And as far as the tracks are concerned, I explained there's a lot of them. Um, let's see. So yes, as you circle around, uh, we'll say you circle around to the to the to the south for no particular reason. Um, yeah, you find that when you kind of get about on the southern side, you can see that the uh, the the sand does indeed go pretty much up to the walls in some places and even over the walls. It looks like it, like some of the ceilings are collapsed. You can see, as you can see here, like some spires sticking up through it. But um, yeah, you think you could probably climb up over the sand and then back down into uh, into the palace, possibly, uh, from where you're at. You'd have to get up there to see exactly how you get in, but you can definitely see those holes in the roof. Um, as you circle around, and you don't see any guards, uh, as you circle around to the western side, which is the back of it, uh, same thing. In fact, the west northwest corner is almost completely buried with sand. Like if you were coming from the northwest corner, you might not even see the palace because it's, it's that under the sand. So you don't see any way to get in there because it's buried unless you want to dig through the sand. And then as you come down off that dune a bit, you see that the, um, the northern side is, is mostly exposed, um, kind of like the eastern side was. Um, and the only entrance, like door-wise, that you can see is that front door, uh, besides the possibility of getting in through one of the holes in the ceiling. So I guess at this point, by this point, you've done kind of like a, a loop in your, I guess you're technically, you're probably on the north side now to about a quarter mile away on the north side. And that probably took you like another maybe hour and a half. So, but again, it's still right out. It was the southwest side that was pretty much completely buried. Uh, southwest, uh, right? Southwest is buried, but you can see like some of the the ruins. So you think that might be an access point to the roof. Uh, northwest is completely buried. Mm. I think. Utrid would suggest to the group that maybe we approach uh, from that side that's completely buried, stay low and quiet and just try and get up there and take a look. Or unless Tan and Panesta would like to take a look. Yes, I will be glad to go on up ahead of us and uh, see what I can see first. Do you want me to come, or do you think that you want to do this on your own? You're more than welcome to come, but it seems like uh, people who go with me are not having very good luck, but you're more than welcome to come. Well, maybe I can help change your luck, and I'll go with him. Okay, yeah. So which direction are you coming from? I want to go to the, uh, I guess, the side where you said that it's, the walls are still exposed enough. Like if we climbed up the side, the uh, sand dunes, we could go on over across the wall. That's the Southwest. Okay. Yeah. So like the Southwest. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So you, you, you know, you circle back uh, to the Southwest. I guess everybody kind of conquers down and waits for you guys to, to come back or the two of you. Um, and uh, yeah, you move forward. It's, it's, it's very much sand duny, even though again, the sand in this desert is just kind of like dirty, like rough, you know, but it is still kind of blown in dunes over the, the, the years with just the savage winds out here. Um, and as you come up on the wall, you can pretty clearly see when you get to where you can see parts of the wall sticking out uh, that you've got some like space of roof that you could walk over, maybe like 30, 40, 50 feet. Um, and, but you do immediately see that there's a, what appears to be, I guess in the pit, in, it, it's a, like a, a domed, it looked like it was probably part of a dome ceiling that has collapsed in. So, um, so there's kind of like a huge hole. When I say huge, we're talking uh, maybe 30 foot uh, diameter uh, circle, basically, uh, in the ceiling about uh, from the corner that you're at, from maybe like 50, 60 feet in. You can see that large hole there. And then closer to the front of the building, um, kind of in the, uh, what would be the, the southeast corner, um, 
you see a couple of like smaller holes as well. Uh, but as far as holes in the ceiling, that's what you see. One large one, kind of almost dead center, but closer to the southern wall. And then a couple small holes more to the to the front of the building. And still no uh, activity? Nope. Not a... Oof. What do you think, Tan? I would say we go in this way then, since there seems to be no... Um guards or active patrols here uh, we go in through this way and, and see what we can find agreed should we signal to the other two yes if you want to go get them i will stay here okay okay so you're going to stay up on the roof kind of watching for anything yep okay a little oh okay all right so while you're up there actually um you hear uh, some kind of uh, talking, and you would recognize the the kind of. Um, do you speak Ixian? Mm, no. no. Or Eskimo? Okay. Yeah, nope. it's kind of like a mix of like a uh, Ixian and Eskimo. It's um, but you've heard it before when you guys were captured the first time, uh, when the the when the uh, the man eaters were were reveling. Um, it sounds similar, although they're not reveling. They're just talking. Um, it sounds like that similar language. Um, unless you want to go up and like, like look, you can't see them, but you can hear it kind of echoing up through that big open hole. Um, and you hear, so you know there's at least two of them talking, um, and they kind of walk through the space. Um, and they seem to be heading um, from basically the front of the building uh, to what would be the north side. So they kind of walk through. I mean, you don't know where any of the corridors are, obviously. So you hear them walking from like the eastern side and then they kind of get loud as they're in that center area. And then you hear the voices kind of drift off to the north and then they're, they might, they go into a room or a hallway or something because then, you know, it becomes muffled and then you can't hear it anymore. Did I ever see a visual on them though, what they would look like? Uh, did you want to crawl up there? If you want to go up and look, then you'll need to do like a stealth check. Because then you no, he's, he's, he's not going to do that. He's just going to wait yeah. where he's at. I figured with you by yourself, you probably don't want to do it. But if you want to, you could. There would just be a chance they might see you if you crawl up there. Um, but you definitely heard them. And that, you know, maybe like 20 minutes, 15 minutes goes by that it takes the time for, um, you know, this happened like in the middle of that time when uh, uh, Panesta was getting the rest of the group, who then I guess you guys uh, all meet up. And, and again, you're on, now you're kind of, you're essentially on the roof of this thing, but it's like ruined. Um, but there's still a solid floor there. And um, what you can see, like I said, is that more or less in the center of the building, but a little bit closer to the southern wall, there's kind of a large opening in the ceiling. And then also there's a couple of smaller openings to the, uh, the southeast, kind of in the corner. When the rest of them come back, uh, Tan will go, uh, while you were gone, there were uh, two men who come from the entrance area and it seems like they proceeded to go north by their voices. I did not understand what they were saying. They were speaking, uh, sounded like a mix of Ixian and Eskimo, and I do not know those languages, but I know there were at least two of them by the distinction of voices, but uh, that's all that happened while you were gone. Well, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Has the sand drifted enough over this wall in order for it to make it easy, like a slope down off the wall into in, to in the inner side? But no, the hole is, is like a hole. I mean, it, you'll know if you get closer to it. So that's how you get closer, you look. Um, it looks like probably the, uh, the ceiling itself may have collapsed there. So it's like literally a hole. Um, there's probably sand down there, but, uh, it, but it's not like a slope. You'd have to jump down or climb down or whatever. Did you want to move forward and look? Carefully. Yeah. Keep, keeping low. Yeah, so you, you get on your belly or whatever and you, and you crawl forward and you kind of look. So yeah, as you kind of suspected, um, there's some sand down there, but it's either been, uh, either they clean the place up or, or whatever, I mean, who knows? Uh, but yeah, it's basically a drop. Um, you're looking into, like I said, about a 30, 30 foot ish diameter circular room. The room itself is, um, it's basically, a, you might consider it a courtyard. Um, so there was probably a building above it that had some kind of a roof that collapsed down into it, but this was probably always some kind of a courtyard. Perhaps it was like, had like glass or something. I mean, who knows? Um, it's a pretty ancient structure. 
Um, you can see in there, there's a bunch of columns uh, that are standing up. Maybe they held something at some point, but right now, like half of them are collapsed. Uh, there is a, a fresco painted all over the walls. Uh, you can see, I'm just giving you a quick rough without taking more time to look. Um, and you can see that there is basically uh, to the south side, it's mostly collapsed uh, area with sand, so you can't see much with, from where you are anyways. To the east side, there's actually a, a 10 foot wide corridor that goes towards the front of the building. Um, to the north, uh, there's two exits that you can see. One is like an opening in the, the almost direct north side. And then to the northeast, there's a door that's closed. And to the west side, you see a set of stairs going up to basically nowhere. It looks like it goes up into some, some crumbled ruins. Um, and at the foot of those stairs, you see two skeletons. And this is about a 15 foot drop down. While Red is doing that, Tan looks back towards the newest member and he goes, I believe your name is Ball or something. I'm going to call you Ball. But anyway, why don't you take that big hammer of yours and try to uh, mess up our tracks so if somebody does come around this side, they don't see our tracks leading up to here. <clears throat> I believe I can uh, figure something out. And uh, Bali will uh, begin to cover up their tracks. Uh, he used to be a soldier, so he probably knows how to cover up tracks pretty well. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, so you kind of start to mess up the tracks, you know, in the general area, I guess. Um, good, yeah, that takes a little bit. Um, as you're kind of on your belly, kind of looking into that room, Uhtred, and as you're kind of cleaning up the tracks, you, you once again hear uh, some voices. Um, again, it sounds like, the, uh, does anybody speak this up there now, speak Ixian or Eskimo? No. no. Okay. So it's you, you know, though, because every one of you has been uh, confronted by these uh these man-eater slaves. Um, it's, it's definitely them. Uh, the door, actually, as you can see, um, opens the one on the north uh, northeast side. The door opens up, and two of these guys, one of which has a large kind of metal collar with a chain hanging off of it, dangling down, uh, they come walking out, and they're, they're, uh, they've got some blood on their face, like it looks like fresh blood and on their hands, and they, they, they're, they're, again, they're talking, and you don't know what they're saying. Um, they, they walk basically south to where that ruined area is and they kind of disappear into the rubble. Hmm. Yeah, and they didn't they didn't see you or anything, it seems like because they didn't well at least they didn't make any alarm if they saw you. We're gonna have to do this very carefully. Do you remember Pin how many uh of these priests or leaders, do you remember how if he said how many there were? I don't believe he did. I think he just said leaders. And just to bring back the heads. I guess we kill and behead until we don't kill or behead or anymore, or they kill and behead us first. Maybe the leaders will have something special. I don't have any rope. Anybody have any rope? <laughs> Let me look. Let me see if they left me any. <laughs> I have uh, a strand. Here you go, brother. And he will uh, hand over the, uh, the uh, rope to uh, I don't see any other way down other than climbing. Does anybody else have any other suggestions? No, that's the only way we can go. And once we get down, we'll have to pull the rope down with us. We cannot leave it there. If somebody walks by, they'll, they'll know. I could always get a knock on the front door. We mm -hmm. could. But I think this is the better way. Let's climb. If you insist. Why don't you stay here, big man, ball, and, and hold the rope for us while the rest of us go first? Very well. 
I'll watch you with my uh, bow from up here. And he has a short bow that he... Uh, okay. Well, if you're holding the rope, you're probably not going to be able to have a bow in your hand. Yeah, I mean like a... Whatever. <laughs> I mean, like, I really well, no, should now down. the rope goes. <laughs> <laughs> I made it more like take, after take they take 3d6 damage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not that the high up. So yeah, you can you can if you drop a rope down, somebody holds it, you'll be able to climb down. You know, you're, you're pretty strong, uh, Ollie. I'm assuming. Seventy. Picture short. Oh, yeah. Okay. You're, um, that's fine. I might worry about. It. So yeah, you're able to to hold the rope. Maybe you put rope. You know, get a little leverage on some some of the large rocks up here. Some of the party can descend into the uh, into the circle, the circular room. Um, I see, like, uh, oh, sorry. Do you want to? No, I was going to say, is it like just all going to go down and then figure it out from there, or do you have like a plan? I mean, could we find a place to tie the rope up here, or do you want to have a spike? We could yeah, spike there's the, the volley could also go down. We don't, we don't want to tie the rope off. We cannot leave the rope hanging here because if they come walking by, they will see yeah, it. All right. Sure. all right, so it's 30 feet down, uh, Daniel? No, 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 it's like 18 feet. Oh, 18 feet. How much, how long is the rope that we have? 50 feet. Yeah. Okay, so how do we do this? So he'll just put down like 20 feet and like, you know, like the rest of like tie around his arm and, you know, Pull it tight. Yeah, I mean, if you're uh, like, how tall are you? And not that I want to tell you how to do this, but just so you understand. I mean, if somebody was, to, if you were, it's only 18 feet. So, like, if somebody hung from the side and another tall person reached up, they could probably almost grab them. You know, so the last person can probably just jump, essentially, with the help of other people. If you don't want to do something more elaborate than that, I'm sure that's probably totally fine. Um, Bali will look at, uh, Tan and say, if that's the case, Bolly will look at Tan and say, you know, like, look, let me and uh, Uhtred go down there first. He looks like the kind of person that can handle himself. Like, you look light on your feet, so I assume that it'd be easy for you to get down. Uhtred and I'll be down there to help. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty short. And... <laughs> I'm sure I'm not useful for this. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, somebody just drops a rope, but whatever, however you want to do it. Fine. We could catch you two coming down. Oh, yeah. Don't worry yeah, about exactly. me. Yeah, Tank yeah, probably scrambled down there without the rope. If you have another way that you want to do it, that's fine. I mean, I'm, I, you don't have to spend a long time getting too elaborate. You can, I'm sure you can get down. If four adventurers can get down 18 feet into a room with a rope, <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> So yeah, you right. make your way down. You know that's fine. Uh, just when you're going back up, it's not going to be fast because you're going to have to figure out a way to get the rope up there. But if you want to take the rope with you, that's fine. You can find a way to do that. Um, and yeah, so you land down in the room. Um, uh, let me just go over it again for you. So again, it's about uh, 30 foot diameter. Looks like it was probably some kind of a courtyard. You, you guess maybe it was covered with glass. I mean, you just if you have any history, like for the bard, you would imagine that. Um, there's no glass here now though. Uh, you see the walls are covered in frescoes. Um, the frescoes are kind of beat up and, and old. Um, they are, um, you know, as you're looking, some of them seem pretty, what you might consider normal, like men in, in like various, uh, you know, uh, armors and, excuse me, ancient armors, like with weapons. And then there's some that are in like ceremon ceremonial headdresses, like waving daggers and doing ceremonies. And then as you kind of, your eyes are kind of looking around and everybody's looking, you start to see that there's, do you start to see some weird, like, uh, uh, chimeric, uh, like combinations, like men with boars' heads and like, or like a horse's body, and, and you know, uh, various kind of weird, like serpent bodies and and a horse's head, and you know, all these weird, like, combinations um, that all seem to be reveling. Um, so that's what that is. Um, so you know, you quickly look at that. Um, to the, as I mentioned, to the west, there's a set of stairs going up that seems to and that ruin because, and you're up there, so you know that basically the stop of the ruin. Um, the stairs themselves are covered in vines. Um, at the foot of the stairs, kind of in the vines, are two skeletons. Um, they look pretty old, uh, you know, clearly because they're skeletons. 
But one of them is wearing kind of a, what probably was a, like a fancy like robe, but it's pretty tattered now. And you can actually see like uh, where in the pocket of the robe, there was this leather pouch that now is, now is kind of exposed because, uh, because the, 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 the robe is decayed, decayed, I should say. Um, and the other one, uh, maybe it was a guard or something, because he has a, a bow. It's a, it's a white, white wood laminate bow um, in his hand and a quiver on its back that seems to have a few arrows still on it. Um, to, again, to the north, you've got the opening almost directly north, and then you've got, which you could probably see into. Um, that looks like it was probably some kind of stables or something, because you can see the wall, the framing for the stables. It looks like there's this hay and stuff on the ground. Uh, but like rotted and, and or some of it's preserved, I guess. Um, and uh, to the east, like I said, you can look and you can see the the entry. You can see that door there. Uh, let's see. Uh, you can't see where those other men went though, because they seem to have gone behind some rubble. So if you, you'd have to kind of go to the east and then to the south to see where they went, if you'd like. But there's so there's a few things in this room that you could explore as as you'd like to. Pan is going to move up to the uh, two skeletons and. Um, mm -hmm. To see them closer, and um, the one that's in the old robes with the pouch, he's going to look first to see if he can see any type of mechanism or something that's hooked up to any of that, or the bow that you know where it's trapped, or it sets off some alarm if you touch it first. Okay. Before. What's your uh, traps? Uh... Uh, manipulate traps is three out of twelve. Yeah, I mean, no, it looks like the vines and stuff have grew grew after the fact. Cause you're kind of looking and you can see that they're kind of, some of them are like through the ribs of the body and, you know, through an eye socket of the skull. So, you know, like it wasn't like the vines grabbed the, the, the outside of the bodies. It, they've grown, they've grown since then, uh, you know, in both bodies. So. He's going you could to probably, uh, reach in and grab that belt pouch then or that little pouch. Oh yeah. You totally do that. So you reach in and grab the pouch. And when you do, you hear a snapping sound and you look up and you can see actually that uh, kind of buried in the vines at the top was some kind of a statue. Um, a hideous uh, statue with wings and it flies to the ceiling uh, to where those stairs go and it sits at the top of the, the stairs that now are there's basically ruins up there um, and it speaks in a terrible voice and it says none shall enter the private chambers of the warlord's palace and it seems to be guarding the top of the stairs as it looks at you was it loud enough? I would think that it would have echoed on further past us, or is it? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't booming, but it definitely was loud. Like it was in, like a normal conversation voice, not quiet. Chan just looks back at the rest of them and goes, uh, "It's not going to work out too well." It doesn't look like. <laughs> uh, okay, so he's going to stand there. Yeah, he's not going to mess with that. Uh, he's going to look in that pouch though to see what's in there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you pulled the pouch open. I mean, you, when you lifted it, you felt some weight to it. There's some gold in there and also a ring. Uh, the, the, the creature seems to be uh, shuffling, like in looking at you. And then it repeats its warning. None shall enter the private chambers of the warlord's palace. And it, and it seems like it's starting to like move down the stairs towards you. Yeah, yeah, we heard you the first time. What's the ring look like? Just a normal, like a gold uh, silver? It is a... Uh, the ring itself is jade um, and it is carved uh, with some various kind of uh, decorative designs. Looks like uh, possibly some kind of like snake or something. I suggest we get a wall behind us so we don't get surrounded. Penn is going to say, do you think we should just get out of this room and away from the stairs? Maybe the thing will just reset itself if there's nobody near it that it thinks is going to mess with its Warlord's Palace. I could hit it with my hammer if you like. Chan will look back and uh, after you're making at it, he'll look at the new guy and he'll go, um, there is a bow and some arrows up here. You might as well grab them. It appears that you're the only one who uses those things. I've got a quiver full. So as you're uh, having this conversation, you're not surprised when you come running out from that kind of ruined area to the southeast and kind of screaming uh, are six. Six of them? Yeah, the six. Well, actually, no, four. Four, uh, four men come running out. Ah! And they're making a shift. Uh, let's roll a shift, I guess. 
Tan just yells at the ball and goes, well, do what you wish. These may have properties that yours do not. Okay, so let's go with the uh, initiative here. I was going to do this so I can track everybody. Uh, Nikki, you'll start. So D6 for the party. Okay. Four. Ooh, they got a five. All right, so they're going to charge out, um, and there's four of them, and there's four of you. So one on each. Here we go. Uh, first one is going to uh, charge at Pernesta with a, let's see, he is using a hand axe to which he gets a first a two. Oh crap, he gets two attacks. Um, all right, so that's a 17, which hits. I'm sure it hits. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's one plus it. That's a, let's see. Yeah, that hits the AC too. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you get whacked with the hand axe. Uh, he's going to do it twice. Uh, second time, this is by tomorrow. Okay. okay. Ooh, four points. Oof. Uh, second guy charges out. Uh, is going to go after Tan. Would I have had time to, um, before we got there, to uh, go to that offhand weapon parry to have two weapons in my hand or not? Well, you lost initiative, so if you didn't have it out already, then no. Okay, yeah, okay, good. Because uh, I think they can, yeah, they can, because they're charging at you. You know, they, they, um, yeah, they're going to have to charge at you because where you are. So hold on, let me actually check that. Yeah, they can get to you in the first segment. All right. So, yeah, so unfortunately, no. Uh, 15, which hits. I'm AC, I'm AC4 right now. Okay, that hits AC4. That's exactly what they need to hit you. Okay. Uh, that's one. Well, actually, he's charging. He only gets one attack, so which is good because I just rolled twenty. <laughs> so we won't use that. Uh, four points. All right. Uh, number three goes after Utrid. No, uh, Bali. Just give myself an order. Uh, misses, I'm sure, with a nine. I'm gonna have to look that one up. And uh, misses with an eight on the on uh, Utrid. Okay, so <laughs> the two warriors were able to. You guys got the two shittiest. <laughs> The cannibals went after you guys. Um, and uh, staying back, the other two have blowguns. They're going to shoot at the two warriors because they know that's a problem. So first one's going to shoot at uh, Pali. Ooh, that's a 19. The blowgun. He gets a plus nothing. Okay, so 19 is going to hit an AC of zero. Which are AC Bali? I'm sure it's probably not zero. Negative six. You don't I have mean a shirt on. Six. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, you don't have a shirt on, so it probably can't be. All right, so that's a blowgun dart. That's going to do a D, D, D4. Oh, no, D, no, it does one point. One point from the blowgun. Um, no. But you do, you do need to make a death slash poison save with a bonus of plus two. Uh, of course, I did. Oh, this is bad. Uh, I got to make a, a what? Uh, death save. So make a saving throw uh, versus. I get a plus two on death. Um, okay. So, so 18. All right, so it's even. I rolled 16. So that's exactly what I needed. No, if you rolled a 16 and you have a plus two, then you have plus four total because the poison itself gives you a plus two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you pass by a mile. Yeah. You are n- not affected by it. Uh, Uchin. Blowgun needle goes at you. That is a one, so that misses. And uh, yeah, it's on you guys now. Um, basically, you've got uh, one guy on each of you, plus there's two of them kind of in that rubble area shooting blowgun darts at the group. So I should have asked you your moves first, but I didn't, so I'm just gonna go in order just for this first time. So Panesta, what are you doing? Um, how many of them are within 40 feet of me? All of them. All of them. I'm gonna ca- I'm gonna start the chanting. The black gulf compels you, and I will try to mesmerize all of them. Oh, okay. Uh, hmm. Okay. I'm not gonna try to suggest or anything. Just mesmerize and cons- and get them stunned. Yeah, they're stunned if they're aggressive. Isn't there a difference between if they're aggressive or not aggressive? How uh, it works. See. Allies and traveling companions are unaffected. They're allowed sorcery saving throws. Those who fail are mesmerized. Okay, correct. So they get mesmerized sauce. are broken once they're attacked. So if someone attacks them, I'm just trying to get. 
Oh, okay, that's what it was. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So you start chanting, so they're going to make saves. All right, so I'll start with the guy on you. Uh, let's see, his save is 14. All right, first guy on you rolls a one, fails. He's mesmerized. Second guy is the one on 10. 19, he's, he's fine. He's focused on Dan. Uh, on Bali, fails. On Uhtred, passes. And the two blowgun guys, pass, fail. Okay, okay that's good. You got a bunch of them mesmerized. Um, let me actually write this down now. <laughs> so he's mesmerized. The one on Bali is mesmerized, and the one on Pness is mesmerized. Oh, well, that's good. You basically took half of them out of combat. Well, unless they attacked. Uh, Tan. Don't attack them. The one on you is not mesmerized. <laughs> yeah, Tan would have had his dagger out, you know, when he was inspecting those skeletons. So, I mean, you know, he's not really prepared for uh, attacking anything. And the, the guy runs up and slashes into him pretty good. He reaches out with his non-dagger hand, and he grasps the guy on the shoulder, and he goes, Die. I'm casting um, command. He okay. gets a if he's got intelligence of thirteen or higher, he can make a sorcery saving throw, and it's modified by willpower adjustment. But if he has an intelligence less than thirteen, they don't get a saving throw. And basically, what he'll do is he just he will fall down and kind of go unconscious, thinking that he's actually dead, but he's not. Right. One round, right? Uh, six rounds. Oh wow! Okay. Um, I'm going to say, I mean, he's human, so, but he's also, uh, no, I'm going to say he doesn't have a 13 intelligence. I'll just make that. So he's out. He drops. Nice. Um, cool. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just going to order this first time. Bali, the one on you is mesmerized. So what does um, that mean? I'll look I'm mechanically. Sorry. He's basically standing there mesmerized. So what do you want to do? Standing there mesmerized? Yeah, mesmerized. You know, he can't. He's like, mm-hmm. no, he's more like, that is some hell of a flute playing going on there. <laughs> uh, but just mechanically, you're near all of them except for the blowgun guys. So if you want to not attack that guy and attack the one, let's say, on Utrid who is not mesmerized, you could do that. Or you could attack that guy who was mesmerized. You'd probably get some kind of bonus. I'd have to quickly check it. No, I'll go ahead and attack the one that's not mesmerized then. Okay. So, yeah, so Bali will head over that way. No, we forgot to actually say what we were going to do before we did it. No, I know. Yeah, I screwed up this round. I didn't ask everybody first, so we're just going to do it this way. All right. So, uh, so that guy who's not mesmerized, uh, my hammer attack hits armor class three. Yeah, it hits. Uh, and I smash him in the uh, chest or whatever for five points of damage. Five, okay. Yep. He staggers back. Still alive, but hurt very, very bad. Uh, Uhtred, while he's trying right. to steal your, steal your kill. Okay. Uh, so the one that he just attacked, is it, so would it be considered distracted by Bally at the moment? No? Not All right. Really. I will attack him. Then I'll swing my sword. That is 18... Uh, so the AC negative two. <laughs> yeah, that hits. <laughs> and wow, twelve damage. Oh yeah, he's dead. I rolled an eight. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, so he gets he gets whacked in the side with the with the hammer. You come down heavy with your weapon and, and chop this guy in two. Um, he only had four hit points left. Uh, okay, so that's the end of that round. Now. Um, now I'm going to ask everybody what they're going to do. So currently, you've got two guys mesmerized. One guy fell to the ground thinking he's dead. Um, there's two guys behind the rubble with uh, blowguns, one of which is mesmerized. Um, so I'm just going to go on the line and ask everybody what they're going to do, and then we'll roll initiative. So, Panesta, what's Panesta doing? Um, well, I'm going to continue to chant, but can I try okay. to... No, I don't think I can do... It doesn't say I can't do anything else. But I don't well, know how you want to play it. I mean, what is it that you want to do? Can you take no other action besides walking? 
it says can, can take no other action no other besides, walking. besides walking. Yeah, so I'm just going to keep chanting. I want to keep these guys stunned. Okay, did you want to walk anywhere? Back up, away from the guy <laughs> who I mesmerized. Back up. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, how about uh, 10? What do you want to do? Uh, you quick one? question. The two that are, there's, there's two of them that are further away that nobody's uh, moved up to. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah, Tan's going to uh, take his dagger, though, when he told to die, the fall down that's fallen down unconscious. He's going to first look up at um, Ball and, and Red and go, get those two before they go warn others. And he's going to take his dagger and slice the throat of the one that he knocked unconscious with a spell. All right, so you're going to make a melee attack. All right, yep. so a melee attack. All right, uh, Bali, what are you doing? Bali looks over to Ofrid and says, he sure is a bossy one. Don't know how you can take that. And uh, then he'll be, he'll uh, put his ham hammer on his uh, shoulder and begin to walk towards the uh, men that you know, or like not like necessarily walk, you know, go towards. You're going to charge the guys behind the thing. You're making a melee uh, yeah. attack. Okay, uh, Uter. Yeah. That is exactly what Uter was going to do. He's going to go out. All right, so you're going to charge the guys. Okay, so. Yeah, I remember this first part. You can just roughly say what you're going to do. You don't have to play the whole thing out because your role is going to make a difference. Um, all right, so let's roll initiative. Uh, Benesta. Two for them. You're muted. Two for us. Two for you. Okay, so that means is a is that this game that has the one arm monster? No, no. Dexterity makes a difference. <laughs> <laughs> There's really too many different systems. <laughs> Dex is seventeen. All right. Yeah. So you guys go first. Okay. So. Okay. So Mila goes first. Uh, Half move and charge, which I think you guys can both do. So the two people that, that are charging, but technically you're gonna have to run there. So I guess the very first action that would happen would be um, you slicing the fur of the guy that thinks he's dead. I mean, he's defenseless, so yeah. It says automatic hit, but I mean, I'm not gonna make you do damage. He's lay, literally laying on the ground, you can kind of slow, especially if he's dead for, 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 for six rounds, so he's dead. Um, all right, so then the charging uh, characters. You guys can, uh, Bali, go ahead, make an attack against your blowgun guy. Uh, armor class negative one. Does that hit? Uh, barely. <laughs> uh, well, uh, he'll still take five points of damage. Five? Okay. All right, he staggers back. Uh, he's still up. Uh, and so, so, um, and Uhtred, and because you're charging, you only get one attack, even though uh, you would normally get two this round, but because you have to charge to get to him. I want to attack the one that's not mesmerized. Okay, yeah. That's a 17. So, negative one. Yep. <laughs> it's. That's eight damage. All right, he's dead. Okay, so it's their turn, but all, I mean, I know. Well, no, actually, that is a very, very one. Uh, there's only three of them left, and they are all mesmerized. So, I mean, if you just want to kill them, that's fine. I'll say it's going to take two rounds. Just to walk what about up them. the uh, creature on the stairs? Is it done anything else there in this? Uh, no, no. Since you moved forward to fight this guy, uh, it it it's still standing there. It did it stopped coming down the stairs though. Like just by the nature of it, you moved a bit forward away from the stairs, and uh, yeah, it seems to be standing there. I'm going to run oh. back and grab the uh, bow and quiver of arrows, real quick, and remove them and come back with it. All right. So um, let me see. This is after we killed the three guys, right? Holly will say to the thing on the stairs, what? Nothing more to say to us? Yeah, let's make sure the three guys are dead before you uh, yell that, please. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm assuming that uh, Bali and, and uh, well, Utra's killing the one guy near near him. You can't kill anybody because you're uh, doing whatever. So, yeah, one of yep. them is going to go. Uh, that's fine. So, you're going to go get thing. I'm just going to roll this thing's reaction to see if it... Okay, I don't remember if this is good or bad in the system. Probably for me, by a... Yeah, right, it's an 11. I can't remember. Like, I know in VX, that'd be a really good reaction. Oh, yeah, no, it is. Okay, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it uh, it sees you grab the stuff, but it sees, you know, maybe because of how you do it, like, you, you kind of crouch down and grab the stuff and pull back really quickly. It, it can clearly see you're not trying to come up the stairs. So, uh, yeah, it, it allows you to, to grab them. And when you pull the stuff away, you see that the quiver is, it's kind of rotten. Um, 
And there were some arrows in there that, that look like they've deteriorated completely with age, but there's four arrows that have not. They're like, they look brand new, like they were just forged. And the bow is, is feels like an incredibly high quality bow. Yeah, and once uh, Ball uh, finishes off that guy, he'll, uh, Tan walks up to him and says, here, this is for you, and hand him the bow and the four arrows. I need for my first attack. Oh, I didn't hear you, Crystal. Your volume's low. Uh, Ball says, wow, it's not even my birthday. Well, you better take it now because you may not ever live to see another birthday. Yeah. Uh, as uh, uh, Bali uh, reaches out uh, to take the, uh, take the arrows um, and the uh, quiver, uh, you can tell that he has this, like, he has tattoos, like, all over him, like, they're like mostly like tribal and stuff, but there's this one tattoo on his uh, shield arm, which stand out from all the others, uh, like on the inside of his shield arm. And he takes the uh, the stuff. Cool. All right. Yeah. I mean, you know, you made a bit of noise, but it was it was over quickly. I mean, it was like two rounds of combat, basically. Although chanting loudly is probably you know. <laughs> In order to mesmerize, you were making sound. It wasn't like you were like blah blah blah. I mean, you were you were loud, right. so you know that that there's a chance other things that were that or that are in here might have heard you. But you know, twenty, thirty, forty seconds passes while you cut the throats and do that, and, and nothing seems to uh, to immediately uh, be charging at you. So you're still in this room. Is there any got, place again, to? Um, I'm sorry, I was just going to say, is there any place we can hide these bodies behind some of that rubble? Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, when they ran back to kill the guys, so the rubble is kind of like a, a cluster, and then behind it um, is where they were standing, and you could actually see that there's like a um, at a cleared area that looks like it goes into like probably some room or something where it's where they came from, basically. Uh, and so you could put the bodies back there if you want to go back there. Oh, no, Siri. Oh. Yes, we should do that. We should definitely hide these bodies, and then we should move so that anything that's coming won't find us here, maybe. Yeah, and Tan's going to, unless somebody would stop him, he's going to take those blowguns and just break them and, and mutter under his breath, uh, po poison, using this poison, a cheater's weapon. Nice. Uh, oh. So if you drop bodies, how, do you want to just put them all behind that rubble or do you want to go investigate that room that they came from? Yeah, Tan will take a look at the room if uh, Red and the Ball are moving the bodies. Yeah, I'll go with you. Uh, what kind of bow is this, Daniel? Is it a short bow? Is it a long it's a short bow? bow. It is a short bow, and it is uh, made of... You tell it's, me ivory, maybe? It's ivory, yeah, it's white. And it, it like, like I said, the, the, the quiver is like rotted, so you probably throw that away, but the four arrows in it are like spectacular, brand new looking, and the bow itself is as well. There's not a scratch on it. The The... the 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 string is like is like looks like it's well waxed or whatever. It's like it looks like it's perfect. Like somebody just stuck a brand new bow down here. Uh, cool. Then he he's gonna go ahead and drop his short bow to to take this one, and he'll he'll sacrifice uh, four of his arrows and put these like in a place where he'll know that they're at. Like so, he won't fire these at first. Okay, so you're gonna leave your bow with the dead bodies, basically. Yeah. Or you drop it in the middle of the room? No, nah, I'll leave one in the middle. Okay, that's okay. okay, so you're going to just walk back there? Do you guys want to sneak back there? Like, what's your approach into the room? I'd like to listen before we go back there to listen okay. real quick. Listening is good. Yeah. That's, oh, uh, yeah, it's a D6 roll. Right? Um, uh, no, I got a um, certain noise is 4 out of 12. Oh, right. Yes. Um, you're listening. It doesn't sound like anything, really. You know, maybe they came charging out, and that was all that was in there. Yeah, I mean, Tana going in, then, if he's pretty confident. Okay. Yeah, so Tana and Podesta move forward while the body's being dragged by the warriors. Um, and you you come and you kind of go through some rubble, and then you, you, you enter into this room, and you can see in here because, uh, you know, probably in that rubble area, it was, like, dark um, a bit. But there's some holes in the ceiling, which you saw from above. Um, and as you're looking into this room, you can actually see that um, there's some figures in here. Um, they seem to be on the, the, the northern side of the room, uh, kind of like huddled up, uh, you know, uh, kind of kind of hiding, I guess, for lack of a better word. 
Um, trying to find the description, sorry. This one, too, too many of my files are named with the same thing. Uh, okay, so that is from three. Uh, yeah, you see there's, there's gotta be, I mean, there's a lot. You see uh, a mixture of women, uh, a handful of men and a lot of children that look like they are the slave uh, type cast. Um, they are huddled up on the northern part of the room. This is a pretty, the room itself, if like there was not, it wasn't full of rubble, would be probably like 20 by 20, but it's, it's effectively like about, you know, two thirds of that because of the room's got a lot of rubble in it. Um, they have like some kind of a threadbare like blankets pulled up over them, so they're trying to hide. Um, and they're kind of like pushed up into the corner and when they see you, they, 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 they look pretty frightened and they're, they, they start speaking to you in the language that you don't understand. Um, because they're they're nervous, you know, so they they revert back to their native language. I do not understand them, Pian. Do you? Are any of them speaking Celtic? Uh, no. But when you no. speak to each other uh, in uh, you know in, in like the common tongue or whatever, uh, what's not the common tongue or whatever the languages you guys speak, um, you uh, one of them uh, like kind of realizes that he was speaking his native language, and he, and he says to you, "We." We mean you no know, harm. We just came here for sanctuary. We we are not killers. Please spare us. We have children. I will spare your life if you will tell me where to find the head priest. Oh, they they make sacrifices. They make sacrifices to to enlighten to enlighten us and bring us to to worship the god Cthulhu. They are, and he points kind of to the north. How many are there? Two, always two, though sometimes six. Do they but have always guards? Two. The, 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 the ones like us, that, that have been uh, raptured, fight for them, and eat the flesh of man. We do not do that. And he kind of like shows you this like rotten fruit, like half eaten. That he, this is this is what we eat. He's kind of you know. Please. How many guards do you think are with them? Ten. Are the priests men themselves, humans? They are, they are men. They are men. They know this talk of the gods, and they perform ceremonies. I have not seen ceremonies. Those who see the ceremonies come back as savage beasts and eat of the flesh. I refuse. So how did you get away from them? You said you're seeking sanctuary here? Not away from them away from Zimbala. I don't want to spend my life as a slave. Would you? No, I can't say that I would. We are born into this. It is not the way it should be. Alexa agrees. <laughs> so they let you stay here even though you refuse to partake? They ask, ask for people to go down and see the ceremony, to find enlightenment. I have refused. There are many who want to, so they do not force, at least not yet. Okay. Tan is going to uh, go up to a pen and just whisper, you know, with that guy came here and he goes, um, we could, have them lead us to that room and we could mix amongst them and maybe surprise the uh, priest and the guards as we uh, sneak in amongst them. They may not uh, recognize that we're hidden at first and at least get one surprise on some of them. Do you think we should pretend to want to witness the ritual? Well, I believe it will go very fast. If we sneak in amongst this group of people, as soon as we enter the room, I'm sure someone's going to recognize the two large uh, people with us, the uh, two large warriors. If we put them in the back, though, maybe we'll have just a moment to act before they do. 
That sounds like a good plan. I agree. Tan will look back to the, uh, the man that's been addressing them and he goes, I want some of your people here to lead us to the room where the priests are. If you do that, when the battle starts, you run for your lives. Me or my friends will not hurt you. The priests are very deadly. I am frightened. You just get me to the room and once we get there, you, you can leave and flee. Yes, they'll be occupied with us. Yeah, so he, he starts speaking his language to some of the other men that are there. There's a, there's a mix, you know, they, they range from, this guy is probably like in his like late, you know, late part of his 20s. So he's still relatively young. Uh, there's some that are older men uh, and there's a lot of children, there's women. Um, and uh, let's see. Go ahead and make a persuasion check. No, so what, what's, your, what's your charisma? So charisma is 12. Okay, so no bonus right for reaction. Do a reaction check here. Um, he's, he's nervous. He says, what, what, we will not be able to stay here once this is done. What, what can we, we need something because I can't go back to Zambala. Bali will hand him his full thing, uh, container of uh, water and say, then you shall leave this place. I, I, you're not there, first of all. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. How many gold pieces was in that pouch? Forty. Forty? Mm -hmm. um, Tan opens that go that uh, pouch back up and he pulls out, you said how many of them are there? Like 10 people or so? Uh, yeah, there's 20 people in here total. About 10 of them are, are men. Uh, there's like six women. Uh, there's no, there's four women and then there's like six children. Tan will pull out two gold pieces and drop them in front of that man on the ground. And he goes, this should be enough to buy plenty of food and drinks to feed you and your women and your children for some time. He will lead us to this room and you will live at least you will not die from the blade of myself or my friend here or my other two friends who are coming up. And then he feels like you threaten us. We are many. We are not warriors, but we will fight for our lives. Oh, no, we're not I threatening drive, you. I drive my dagger in him. Oh, you're going to go after him? Right, go ahead. Roll him. Uh, four. All right, you go first. Go for it. Yeah, I'm just going to – I have my dagger and sword both out, but I'm just going to take the dagger and just – Oh, God. I miss. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, no. You're about to get mobbed. And the dice, the dice just fail me every time. Yeah, the, the dice hate you. <laughs> All right, well. Uh, oh, Panessa, I'm sorry. You get to go because uh... – Oh, I don't – I want to try to say, wait – Wait, we really don't want to hurt you. <laughs> okay. We'll see if you can convince anybody. What's your charisma? 15. Oh, so do you have a bonus, reaction bonus? Uh, yeah, plus one. Okay. Yeah, no, they're, they're not. No, uh, okay. At this point, they're not having it. They at least want to go out. They, 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 may, they're, they may not attack you, but they're definitely attacking the, the men who just tried to stab their... <laughs> Where's the stats for the for the poor helpless slaves? <laughs> Tan and go, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, they are. Uh, all right, so they don't have anything. They're just gonna. They're actually gonna try to grapple you. Like 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 a bunch of them jump on you and try to take you. Let's say, I mean, I think actually I mean, they're gonna overbear you because we haven't used overbearing yet. Come on, we might as well use all the rules. Oh, what is that? Over like they're gonna basically uh, like dogpile you. You're gonna try to bring you to the ground, basically. Uh, let's see. Which makes sense. That's what I would probably do if in this face with the situation. Uh, let's see. I can never ever find the off the on combat actions. There it is. Okay, overbearing. Let's see. There's overbearing in here, right? Yeah, overbear. Attempt to tackle or potentially pin or restrain an opponent. D20 attack rolls made with strength, attack modifier. Cool. All right, so let's see how many of them. Oh, hold on. 
uh, upon successful attack roll, okay, the victim is smaller the size, large target for every additional overbear hit beyond the first. Okay, so okay, so I'll roll all the hits first, and then you'll get a saving throw. All right. So you don't have to roll against each one. Uh, all right, so first guy. Uh, no, he was a nine. That's not going to hit you. Next guy, eight. <laughs> These are not warriors. <laughs> Oh, 15, that might hit you. What are you saying? Is it a, would it be AC3 since I've got the um, sword and the um, dagger out? Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay. Uh, no, he's, uh, yeah, just the dagger prevents him. That, that would hit AC4, so that would hit you. Uh, and finally, the last guy, no. So these four guys all try to, like, kind of, they're, they're circling around you to try and tackle on you, but they just can't get their hands on you. Um, and, and they say, they're, they're basically howling now and saying, leave, leave. And then, and then a few of the women are screaming out, help us, in, in their language. So whatever the language sounds like, I'm going to try to do that because it's pretty offensive. So, uh, yeah, uh, what do you want to do? <laughs> you got four guys trying to tackle you. The rest of them seem to be scared, but then there's um, – some of them are kind of rallying and picking up rocks, and, uh, and the women and the children are screaming for help. And I guess at this point, probably Bali and Ruth would probably hear that. <laughs> so uh, Tim, Tim will just – Get out of here. Tan will look at the uh, man. He'll go, take the coins and get out of here. Leave now. Okay. Panista will say, Tan, talking. let's just go. Right. And then she'll go. And you're going to run? Okay, Bali. Uh, I mean, if Bali is coming in. Okay, yeah. So he'll say, so he'll look at Oatford and just go, let's go. And, uh, let's and rush off with yeah, they're not speaking a language you want. Well, I don't know. Do you speak Ixian or Eskimo? No. Okay, so you don't understand. All right, so, yeah, you hear basically women and children screaming. Uh, I'm going to go the direction of, you know, whatever the direction he told us to go, start walking that way. Yeah, I mean, you're basically going to run into the other. I mean, essentially, uh, if, you're, if you're leaving, I mean, they know they're outmatched because you have weapons and stuff, and especially if they hear other people coming. So uh, when you say take the gold, they basically just step back. And uh, they don't even take it right away. They just kind of step back to, to let you leave the room. And then you hear shuffling on the ground as they scoop it up. Um, and you, you encounter the rest of the party in that, that kind of like, we'll call it a corridor for lack of a better word, where uh, the rubble was built up blocking this area. out. Um, and you circle back into that main uh, room. So basically, again, you're in this room. The, to the east, you see the front doors. Uh, by the way, you probably also noticed, so I'll just point this out now, just because it becomes relevant later. Uh, the front doors are actually barred from this side. So if you had gone to them, you would not have been able to open them anyways. Um, to the north, there's that opening that looks like it led into like a, 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 a smashed up stabling area. Um, and to the northeast is that door that you saw that you guys come out of. Yeah, I'm going to go whatever direction that guy told me to go. to get. To How many points to the north? You want to go north? Yep. He, so and when, we, when we come out, Tan just looks at the red and, and ball and goes, never mind what happened in there. It's It's... The man said we need to go this way to find the priest. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you head up to that room. Go ahead and uh, hire low, Tony. Uh, low. I roll low, so I might as well say low. <laughs> okay, good. That's good. All right. So you guys move in uh, out of that central area um, into what is, uh, as I said, basically like a smashed up stable area. I'll describe it to you. Let me get my description. Uh. So you see, basically, there are, uh, okay, so you can see that the walls in here are burnt. It looks like it was probably a stabling room. So you see, essentially, uh, this is a, like a 30-ish foot, uh, 25, really, square room. You came in through the southern wall. On the eastern wall, there's a door. On the northern wall, there's a door, kind of in the eastern corner of the northern wall, I should say. The rest of the northern wall, it has like these... Uh, what would be stalls like you put horses in back in the day. You know, they're made out of stone, so they're still there. But in each one, you can actually smell the, the like a smell of decay. And as you just kind of quickly look in there, you can see that there are uh, some, some bones. Um, in, the, in the one to the far uh, west, you see that the, it looks like it's been used as like a, a, some kind of burning pit because you see like burnt bones and the, the wall is like scorched, like there was a fire in there. Uh, in the center one, uh, you can see that it's being used as like a toilet because it smells and reeks. Um, and in the third one, um, you can actually see that there's some junk in there left over. Maybe they just threw all the stuff in there from what was ever in the stables. You can see like a, uh, a wooden uh, chest that looks like it's kind of rotted up. Um, and you see some broken uh, clay urns. 
So there's nothing, you know, oh, and there's also a dragon. No, I'm just kidding. No, no there's nobody. <laughs> However, um, uh, Panessa, do you have, do you have a listen skill as well? Yep, I do. Uh, Same, as me, probably. Okay. That's so funny, okay. <laughs> Utrid, <laughs> you here. Uh, oh, actually, do you have, well, it doesn't matter. I rolled one. Um, as you guys kind of come into this room and you're obviously aware that something could happen, um, you hear actually behind you, essentially, coming through that door, um, the, the door open and you hear the, that, uh, that language being shouted by several men and they seem to be running back towards where you just had that combat. So if you can imagine, like, there was a door to the, an opening to the stables here and there was a door over here, you guys went this way and then, then the, uh, the people that came to, to, to help, whatever, went that way and went past you. But you don't know how long it'll be before they, you know, obviously they have to run to the room and talk to the people, but you, you know that they, they have now gone south. We need to move. Yeah, so you're basically in this room. Again, door to the north, door to the east, uh, stably areas with junk in them. Keep going north, then, if the guy's going to go north. Yep. Okay. Uh, perfect. Uh, yeah, so you open the door uh, to the north, and you are looking at... Uh, the walls and floors are covered in bloodstain and bones. Blasphemous symbols are carved and painted in blood on the walls and floor. Butchery utensils have been cast about carelessly, uh, presumably in gluttonous haste. Uh, oh my God, it's pouring rain. Uh, a broad cedar table, not in the story, where I am. A broad cedar table dominates the southern portion of the room upon which rests the carcass of a previously consumed man. Flies buzz over the cadaver while rats pick it clean. Um, so you're looking at basically a butchering slash kitchen area, for lack of a better word. Uh, it's, it's about, uh, 25 feet wide by about 20 foot deep. Uh, you see a door to the west wall and you see a set of stairs going down. Hmm. But no north. Uh, you can't go north any further. You're basically at the end of the building. And go to the west door then. To the west, Okay. All right, so you pull open the door to the west. Um, uh, oh, cool, okay. So you're looking, you're basically in a, uh, like a wide hallway that's like partially collapsed. So when you look in here, like you look to the north and like it only goes a few feet and then it hits the outside wall basically. And to the south, it looks like the, the, uh, the corridor runs down about uh, about 35, 40 feet and then turns to the left, which would be the west. Um, it's kind of dark in here, but there's a, uh, you know, there's some, there's some like trickle of light coming through because it's a ruin. So it's not completely dark, so you can kind of see, but it is, it is dark. Yeah, uh, Tan will look back at a pen and go, um, let me go up to that corridor and, and look down at first. Uh, Y'all stay behind me a good 30 or 40 feet. Okay. Then I'll go up there where I can look around, peek around the, the corridor and back to the west. Be careful, right, Tate. Yeah. yeah, so you start moving uh, down that corridor. You get maybe like 20 feet down. And when you do, you hear the sound, but everybody else sees the thing of the door behind you guys that was coming into this uh, this butchery room bust open and in pour uh, the, 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 uh, the cannibals. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the three of you in the room, what do you want to do is actually... No, you're not surprised. Well, yeah, I don't think you'd be surprised anyways. And they're not surprised because they're chasing you. So uh, let's see. Everybody that's in that room currently, well, I guess, yeah, you probably wouldn't hear it until after the first round, Tan, so you're just doing what you're doing. Uh, Panesta, the door busts open behind you. You see cannibals coming in. What do you want to do? A lot of them. A lot of them. I mean, you can see that there's more than one at this point. Until they get in the room, you won't know how many there are. Well, I'm going to run after Tan. Okay, you're going to run. Okay, uh, Bali. Which one? Uh, Bali will. How many are there? You don't know. They haven't gotten the room yet. The door busts open. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, okay, Bali is just going to hold his ground. Uh, he'll wait for them to get to him before he, uh, before he you know, attacks. Then he'll melee? Yeah. Okay, uh, Utrid? I will stand with Bali. All right, so you guys are going to stand and wait. All right, so uh, since you guys are standing there, let's. Uh, 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 Kenneth, let's do. You'll do initiative for this combat. So go ahead and roll six. Four. Ooh, they got six. 
which actually works for you anyways, because they were going to charge forward before you attacked them anyway. So, uh, yeah, they run in. Uh, I'll say, though, that, I mean, being the room is kind of small and full of junk, that only two are going to get through the door this first round and attack you two, but you do see there's more coming through behind. So one on each. First cannibal goes at Bali, misses with a six. Second cannibal, these guys have axes. Second one, ooh, at Utrid rules a 12 plus 2, 14. What's your AC? Uh, four. Oh, no, just misses. You just managed to deflect them off. So, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, go ahead, Bali, make your attack. You've got one in front of you on you and one on Utrid. Uh, Bali will say to Utrid, uh, it feels good to fight with a clan brother again. And then he will hit armor class negative one for 12 points of damage. For 12? Nice. That's yep. a nice hit. Uh, perfect. Uh, he, he, he goes, he looked, he gets hit, he goes like this. That's all you got, bro? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I, that, that kills him. If that didn't kill him, then you should run. <laughs> yeah, you better run. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let me just make sure how many there are. You guys are cleaning house here. Uh, all right, so these there. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, good. I just want to make sure I know how many there are total because you guys are you guys are basically uh, exterminating. <laughs> all right, uh, Utrid. You see your brother in arms cut down one of the the men. Uh, let's see. Uhtred will laugh and say, ah, yes, brother, it is. And I rolled an 18, so it's an AC1. That definitely is. And These guys are AC8, so. Only, let's see, six damage. Okay, that puts a big gash in him, but he's still up. Uh, all right, more flooding into the room. I'm going to say no more than four of them get, get in here total, though. Uh, uh, Panesta, you run into the corridor. I don't know if you're yelling behind him or if you're just running behind him, but you probably can catch up to, uh, probably caught up to, I should say, uh, Tan, because Tan was moving slowly, obviously, uh, exploring. So you guys are both like 20 feet down the corridor and you hear combat happening. So what does Panesta want to do this round? Um, I will say to Tan, they're coming, lots of them, behind us. Do we need to just maybe run and get to a place where we can bar a door? It may become from in front of us too. Then let me work up my to the corridor here. And I think it's dark enough. I will hide in the shadows. And the first one that comes around the corridor, I will surprise them. You can come with me or go back if you would like. And I'm going to keep working my way up to that uh, corner where I can kind of hide in the shadows or that corner in case somebody comes that way. Okay. Yeah. For sure. Uh, I'll stay with Tan. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you go down. I mean. You can basically go, you go down and, and you turn that corner and you can see that there's like some sand and stuff has drifted in through the roof. Like there's parts of the walls that are not, wall that's knocked down here. Um, so it's actually kind of, because this is, you realize that this is the part that's like completely underground. Um, you can see that if you went further to the west, that there's an opening to go into a room that's to the south. But if you want to stay right there, that's fine. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay in that dark spot and, and stay quiet and hid and have Vanessa do it too. Yeah, I mean, I don't. You don't have to roll for that. I mean, you're you're in the dark and around a corner, so I, I'm going to say you're hidden. Uh, you're good. So unless they come sneakily, which they wouldn't, if they're coming out here at all, they're going to come running. So in, in all effects, you're basically hidden. Um, so that's cool. You guys do that. Uh, and Bali slash Utrid, what is your plan for this round? Uh, uh, smash some heads. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to assume you're doing melee, but I, I assume you're doing melee, but I don't want to assume it. Okay, so Kenneth, uh, initiative against the, uh, the now four cannibals. I rolled a one. All right, they got a three, so they're going to go first. Okay, so, uh, okay, so against Bali. Ooh, that's, uh, I'm going to repaint these dice. That's a 18, which I think probably does hit. Uh, that's AC1. What's your AC? Bali? Six. Oh, you're six. Okay, so they need 13. I'm just going to make a note of what they need to hit you so I don't keep looking at the chart. And what's your AC, Utrid? Uh, four. Four, okay. So to hit you, then you have 15. Okay, perfect. That way I don't have to keep looking at the chart. It makes my life easy once the combat starts. 
Okay, cool. So uh, that's going to hit. I'm just going to do all the attacks first. Actually, this is round two. They get two attacks. Well, at least the guy that was... No, you killed your guy, right, uh, Crystal? So the other guys are actually charging, so they only get one attack each. Uh, second guy misses, though. But the guy that you attacked, Uchi, but didn't kill, he will get two attacks because it's his second round. Uh, 14, he misses you barely. And the other guy that charges in hits you, though. Four, four points. Okay, so these two are on Uhtred, these two are on Polly. Okay, it's your turn. And actually, I think, I don't know, uh, well, Uhtred definitely has two attacks this round if you're using, I'm not sure how Bali's set up, but you do have weapon mastery with the hammer, Crystal. Uh, yeah, uh, as these guys are rushing at him, uh, it, well, there's like two of them on the right now. Yeah, they're, they're on you now. Yeah, two more came in and they're attacking you because they want initiative, so they're not rushing, they're actually on you. Okay, so, uh, Bali is gonna, is gonna call out, you know, to these guys, we come from the land of ice and snow, where the midnight sun and the hot springs flow, the hammer of the gods upon my hand. We'll drive our ships to new lands to fight your war. Okay, you don't get to attack because you took too long talking. Okay, Uhtred, go. Uh, Combat, if you spend a lot of time talking, you're going to miss your turn, because I'm sorry, that's a long-ass thing to say. Go ahead, Uhtred. Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't want to do that. Like, come on, every time you can have this long 15-minute yell. AC4. And that's going to be seven damage. Okay. Doesn't uh, kills that first guy. And my second attack, that's sixteen. That's gonna hit, and that's gonna be eleven damage. Oh, dead. Okay, so those two guys are good. Okay, now go, Bali. Uh, you want me to reroll? No, but I mean, while you were doing all that, Udru wasn't waiting for you. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's okay. Um, go. Head on the class, uh, a wolf one for six damage. Nice, doesn't quite kill him. Ye old Second Led Zeppelin. Second attack. All right. Um, no, that, that, that the second attack misses. Okay, cool. All right. All right, so currently, all right, so more, there's right now, actually, uh, Udra, you're clear, there's none on you, but there's more coming in through the door. Bali, there's still two on you. Um, coming to this round, what are you, I'm assuming you guys are hiding in the other room. If you want to do something else, just tell me. Are you guys just meleeing these guys? The more are coming. It's hard to say how many more there are, but there's definitely more coming. Uh, I would try and run. If I had the space, I would try and run up towards the door, maybe block the door. Uh, okay. I mean, if you go and block the door, you can, but both of you won't be able to attack because of the types of weapons that you're using. You know, so if you block the door, then Bali won't be able to attack. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not going to be able to swing a sword and use an axe in the same spot. But you can do that I'll, if you want. I'll just stand here and defend them. Okay. I mean, or you could go back to another door and do it. But like I say, if you're going to, if you had a spear or some other weapon, you could do that. I will so stand shoulder. I will just stand shoulder to shoulder with my friend. I mean, you are doing good so far. Uh, Bali, what are you, what are you doing? He lied or doesn't get me. Uh, hammer. Hammer? Okay, cool. Uh, and they're hiding over there. All right, let's do let's do initiative. Uh, Kenneth. Oh, they've got a one. So you guys go I first. Got two. All right. Uh, Bali, go ahead. You get one attack this round. There's two on you. One's injured. Uh, armor class uh, four for ten yep. damage. Yeah, for how much? Ten. Oh, wow. yeah, you smash the crap out of that guy. He dies. A bloody mess on the ground. Uh, Uhtred. So technically, there's only one other person in the room currently because you guys won initiative. The other ones haven't run in. So there's actually only one person in here, and it's on Bali, but you could certainly could attack him if you want. You or you can AC, move. You said their AC was eight? Yeah, they don't run any armor. All right, that's a five then. So I did five damage. Nice. Okay, it doesn't quite kill him. Okay, so the other ones are going to run in. Um, Okay, so I guess technically, since four can fit in here, three will run in. You actually look back and you can see that these ones kind of run in and in the door, you, there's only two more standing there and they have blowguns. guns. So they're about to assault uh, 
well, the Blood Guard's not going to go yet because they, they would have to wait until the other guys come. Uh, so first attack against Bali. Misses. Oh, uh, hits. Six points against Bali. Two guys are right up on Uhtred. Miss. Miss. Okay. Blowgun guys are, are loading up their blowguns. They're not going this round. <clears throat> so currently, there's four guys in the room, one of which is injured. That guy's on Bali. Then there's, uh, there's, two, fresh, there's two fresh guys on Uhtred. And you see two blowgun guys in the door. Do you want to do anything else besides what you've been doing? Hey, Daniel, uh, I just I do want to say one thing. If, yeah, if, if I, mean, I know it's not going to come to this this round, but if Tan, if he sees like, you know, here's the end of the battle and looks up and instead of seeing Red or, or Bali run through that way, if he sees those cannibals, he's going to automatically start taking off running down that open corridor on further down to keep his distance. Okay, so he's not going to wait around to do a backstab or whatever he's going to do. No, 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 he's going to wait right now. But as he does see the, uh, you know, the bad guys come behind from behind him and knowing that Red and them are down, he's going to take off running then. Okay, makes Just sense. Just if, if it does come to that point. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Podesta, you're, you're standing by. Standing by. Okay. Then you guys are fighting shoulder to shoulder. Go ahead. Uh, bring us home there, uh, Uhtred. Or Tana. Uh, one uh, again. They got a one. Uh, go ahead, Molly. You got two guys on you and you got two attacks. Smash some skulls. Uh, we'll see. Uh oh yeah, the first one will hit, and the second one will hit as well. Um, nice. And the first one will do twelve points of damage. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh nice. And the second yeah, one will do eleven points of damage. Dead, nice. dead. Okay. <laughs> All Just right. Just let you know, like I, I, I figure I'm using my Warhammer versatile. That's I'm rolling a D10 because I mean I don't have a shield, so. Yeah, using it with two hands. Yeah, no, it's pretty yeah. badass. You're smashing the shit out of these guys. Yeah, they go down uh, easily. Uh, you know, uh, Uhtred. Uhtred with blood running down his face, smiles at Bali and swings his sword. That's uh, 14. So That's going to be 60. C, so both hits. It's uh, going to be nine damage. And seven damage. Okay. One guy goes down. Uh, the other guy stays up, and it's their turn. He's going to actually – these guys do not – they never back down because they're crazy. Uh, so he's going to try to attack you. Oof. 19, that's going to hit. Ooh, four points. Uh, and the two below – you, you said you. Is that Uhtred or is that – Oh, I'm sorry, Uhtred. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, so was... yeah well, <laughs> Bali has been killing all of uh, his <laughs> – all right. I don't know. You know, you may have uh, some uh, issues in the arena next time. Yeah, Udra takes four points. Okay. Still up? I'm still up. Okay, low gun guys. One against Bali. Hits. One against Udra. Bali goes down. Really? You only have one hit point? Yep. Crap. Okay. So you go to zero, right? Yep. Okay. And I guess I gotta do a saving throw. Yeah, see if, if you get a plus four though total. Who did you get missed? That's good. Uh, fifteen. I filled my saving throw. Yeah. Ooh, okay, that's not gonna be good. Okay, you're gonna be taking some damage, but over the course of time, we'll do that in a second. Um, so Udred, you get these two blowgun guys in the door. They they shoot their darts, and then you see that they uh you know. They uh, they then lift their uh. They're clubs, and they're they're going to charge you. Now, there's three of them total now. There's two blowgun guys plus the axe guy in the room with you, and Bali just went down. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to stay and defend my friend's body. Nice. I will fight to the end. All right. Shoulder to shoulder. All right. Initiative. Six. Okay. Go first. I want to attack this round. So you got one. The two blowgun guys haven't moved forward yet because you won, so there's just the one guy in front of you. Uh, let's see, that's going to be, yeah, negative one AC. Yeah. And that's going to be 11 damage. Dead. Okay, so the two blowgun guys are going to charge forward with their clubs. 
and kind of in a battle rage, you know, Uther's just gonna shout, come on! <laughs> nice. Uh, missed. Missed, all right, maybe that intimidated him. Um, okay, two guys with clubs on you. Doesn't seem to be anybody else besides them and you right now. But I guess if you're gonna keep on fighting, this I is am. it. I am, that's it, I'm going. I uh, rolled a five. Okay, they got a three. Go ahead, you get to a Texas friend. Yes, come on. So that's an AC two. Ooh, that's 18. Wow, that's gonna hit. Um, so damages, six. So 10 damage for the first hit. He goes down. Oh, and I just dropped my dice on the floor. Ugh. Oh. Hold on. And that is a nine damage for the second hit. He goes down as well. Wow, that is a battle rage. So you, 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 the two uh, warriors beat down these, uh, these creatures. Now, let me just check something. Hmm. Standing there, breathing heavily, blood running down his face. <laughs> so, Crystal, roll me two d six. Yeah. Oof. Okay. Hey, Daniel. I'm gonna guess I'm dead. Yeah. Daniel, Daniel, real quick. Um, the barbarian has a draw poison ability. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yep. Good. Thank you. However, one second. I'll roll another two d six. Okay. This one you want. Okay, so you're going to take 10 points over the course of six rounds. So we're going to say two rounds have gone by, so you took four points. So you're negative uh, four currently. All right, uh, and then you can do it, I guess. I'm not sure exactly how it works. But, uh, so, so it says to, to draw and spit poison from a snake bite or other venomous wound, such as a scorpion sting or spider bite. So I don't know if this, does this work? Yeah, I say so. Why not? So the attempt must be made within two rounds of affliction for a three and six chance, okay. within four rounds for a two and six chance, or within six rounds for a one and six chance. So where are we at? We're at two, so go ahead and do three and six. Three and six, okay. And I rolled a three. Wow, all right. You, you, you're sucking your friend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's, hey, it's all, not it's that all, personal. It's all quiet in the, uh, in the, uh, the Podesta and uh, uh, Tan. It, it, it's gone quiet. Nobody, nobody's coming um, as this is going on, I guess. Um, let's see. Wow, okay. That was tight. Um, you said you're at, uh, whoosh. Well, because you can't really, you're not really bleeding up because you're, didn't, you can be woken up. Um, but you're going to be very groggy. You're going to need rest unless you, somebody has healing, which I don't think anybody does. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to basically be, uh, you know, somebody's going to have to like put their arm around you and like drag you, you know, help you walk or whatever. You're not going to be able to fight, unfortunately. Uh, Molly. Uh, yeah, I'm, if you if you have bandages, you probably do, yeah. I think my character has some, but I mean, I could tell them. Tan, should we go see what happened? I mean, I think I know what happened from the sounds, but <laughs> shall we go see if they're all yeah. right? No, Tan, at, at hearing that, yeah, he just says, yeah, I, I don't know, I'm not going to move from here um, uh, for just a moment unless we, I uh, figured if they would have lost, they, the, the bad ones would have come charging through, but if you want to go check, I will wait here. Yeah, I'll go back to where Uhtred is in, in Bali. Okay, are you sneaking? Do you even yes. have that ability? Okay, yeah, I do you can not. Sneak okay, that's fine. Oh, yes, so I do. That... I can move silently. I do. Five out of 12. Okay. Yeah, so you creep up there and you look in and you basically see Bali on the ground and Utrid is uh, drawing, you know, sucking on a wound or whatever, drawing the blood, spitting it on the ground. Not what it looks like. It's not what it looks like. <laughs> There's like dead bodies have piled up everywhere. <laughs> I will sing of your bravery, you two. <laughs> Definitely. Do you have bandages, Bali? Did you say you did? I did. Yeah, well, you're not. Okay. Yeah, I think you're not bleeding out, so you don't necessarily need the bandages. But oh, you can okay. you can use them just for flavor. You know, they're only if you're bleeding out that you need them. 
Okay. Yeah, because I'm even though technically you bleed out at negative four, but you wouldn't be bleeding out because you're taking the damage from poison. So I'm gonna say you're not bleeding out. Um you gotta interpret things as they go. Uh okay. So you are in this room that's a knife probably like oh there's like rotted body in here. There's some rats that are probably scattered because of the combat. You've got a bunch of dead slaves piled up on the ground. Uh, you probably would have a hard time getting through that door because <laughs> there's so many in your way now. Um, and you've got basically a set of stairs going down. You've got your wounded friend and your other friend is down the corridor in the dark. But yeah, you can be like slapped in the face or, or some you know alcohol in your mouth or whatever to wake you up, uh, Bali, but you won't be able to fight um, until you get actual healing. Bali, do you want to come with us? Uh, yeah, Bali will follow. Where are you going to go? Back to where uh, Tan is? Yeah, I think we should not split up. I think we should probably follow Tan. Okay. You I'll definitely support, can do it. Uhtred will support Bali. You know, he'll put it, you know, help, help him walk. And, uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you can definitely help him walk. I mean, you, you're you're probably moving at like half speed and, and moving down the corridor. Uh, I'm, pretty, after, I'm pretty low on oh, hit points too. So yeah, very valiantly one hit uh, victory. Wow, that was. Yeah, I mean, luckily you were in that spot where they couldn't surround you. That was that was good. You you killed ten. <laughs> that's guys. awesome. You the two of you. I mean, that's pretty epic. Uh, you'll have to tell the bard about it because the bard wasn't there to watch. So. But Bali and uh, Uhtred uh, kick some ass. Uh, it's going to be all about seeing me sucking poison out. I can hear it now. <laughs> all, right. Uh, all right. So, yeah, you move down to where uh, Tan is. Uh, like I said, you're kind of in a, a dark, uh, but there's some light kind of bleeding through uh, passageway. It's headed basically, it's, it's a north south path. You, know, you guys are down at the southern end of it after it turned to the, uh, to the west. So, I guess technically it's east west passage. Um, you can see about 10, 15 feet beyond on the southern wall, there's a, uh, an opening that you could go into another room. Um, the passage itself doesn't go any further to the west beyond that because it's just full of sand. You know, Tan, it's seeing them come up there, it just goes, well, at least you two come out. You may not look uh, very uh, well right now, but at least it was you two who come out and not the uh, savages. Um, uh, you you stay here, you three, and let me sneak up to this room and see what I can see from now. Nobody ever come out of it, so it must be empty. But I'm going to sneak down there and see what I can see in that room. Cool, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you move in uh, or to the side and you look down. And again, it, you, there's just like flickering bits of light in here, but you're out, you've been standing in there for, for a few minutes, so your eyes are a bit adjusted. Um, this room looks like it was probably pretty deluxe at one point. The floor looks like it was made of marble, but it's all smashed and cracked um, at this point. Um, you see a set of stairs um, that seem to be going, uh, uh, it seems like it uh, descended like, into some kind of grotto or something, but the, it's smashed and you know, like the grotto's not there anymore. There's no water in it or anything. Um, let's see. Uh, you can see that there's basically, actually, hold this. Yeah, you can see that kind of over by the ruin, there's kind of like an area that, that uh, uh, um, there's enough stones piled up where it almost is like a little, like a cave type area um, that you can kind of see. It's a little bit dark, but you can kind of see into it. Um, and otherwise, the room is basically mostly full of sand um, and rubble. So, except for kind of the, the grotto and the area that's kind of like got some rubble that looks almost like a, a cave in, like a cave area, like a, that's all that really seems notable in this room. There's no monsters in here or, or cannibals or anything that's super noticeable anyways. Yeah, it appears no other way to go, huh? But it's passable. Yeah, no, it's just sand. Uh, and you can see that like clearly, you know, there was probably like ways out of this room at one point, but the room, it, it's just collapsed in now. So it's a dead end basically, except for that, that, uh, grotto area, but it doesn't look like that goes outside. It looks like it just like goes into another little section. He goes back down to the corner and there's no other way uh, this passage, there's no other way out of there. It's a dead end. Uh, so we can safely go back the way we come. And I guess we'll have to go down the stairwell because it does not appear there's any other way to go. At least we will not be snuck up on from behind the stairwell. I guess when we get back in that room, um, 
I will do my best to help you. Maybe we can pile the bodies in front of that door and uh, no one else can come in at least while we go down the stairs. Yeah, I can help you tan. So we go so back. I guess that we way. go back to the butcher room. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, you go back there. Everything's as you kind of left it. Um, bloody cannibals smashed by a hammer, or sliced by a sword, uh, kind of piled by the door. A set of stairs going down. And of course, the door, if you want to, you know, if you want to leave the room, you'd have to pull the cannibals away and go out that door to the south. If you, if you want to do that. That's the way we come in, right? That's the way it came in from you. Yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm going to leave that door blocked if we can with the cannibal bodies. Yeah, we want to try to block it with the bodies. And I guess we're, we're Daniel, you need, Daniel, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. Yeah, so you can definitely do that. I was trying to press to go to the map, and I pressed the mute button. Uh, yeah, you um, you can do that. You can throw the rest of the bodies like up on the pile to make it more even more uh, difficult, you know, uh, for somebody to get through. For sure, yeah, it takes a couple minutes. You do that. Real quick, uh, was there any gold or money on those bodies at all? We don't have a whole lot. We may need some place to rest at this point too. They. No. Okay. They carry no treasure. Um, they have just axes, you know, and loincloths. A couple of them have, uh, you know, chains around their necks, but nothing of, of value. Uh, the, oh, I guess maybe you didn't notice it, but <laughs> ten this <it> took someone. <laughs> uh, All right. Yeah, I mean, you don't, you know, uh, right? You could at this point. I mean. If you're beat up, you don't know where you are in the desert, but certainly if you go off, um, you could camp or whatever. I mean, you could definitely do that. You don't have to uh, stay here. If we leave this place, <laughs> that's not a very smart idea. When they come up and discover all their troops dead, they're gonna know. I mean, um, we're here for a mission. It's alive or dead. I wasn't suggesting we leave. I meant for later. Oh. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Just pilfering, just pilfering. Down the stairs. We will, we will have to wait many more additions before we can take short and long rest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I will well, say, though, Tan, I know we don't really want to leave, but Uhtred's really hurt. Bally is incapacitated functionally at this point. I don't know what to do. It also well, is kind not, of the middle, middle of the night at this point. I'm not yeah. too well myself either, but uh, there's nothing. I, I see no other choice. And the only suggestion I would have is if we encounter them, we can go down their stairwell. The only thing that comes to mind is uh, with Bally not looking too well, I can try to throw a guys and, and Bally, if you will let, lean on my shoulder, we will go up to the head priest and I will tell him I have brought a sacrifice for his savages, and then I will do my best to stab him before he can react. There's gonna be, okay. And I will try to take out one of the other ones because there could be up to six priests. Well, the men told us too, though, but you know, who knows um, if he's lying or not. All right. Big man, you don't look too well. Do you agree to that? I will propose that you are my prisoner and that you will be on the butcher's table next, but however you will not be, I hope. Uh, agree to butcher some cannibals? Yeah, I can do that. Well, let's go. And I'll, okay. um, I'll, I'll push Bali to the stairwell first, you know, and walk right behind him with my sword point at him. You know, of course, not actually poking them, but okay. It's it's dark down there because we see no other way to go besides this, right? So, uh, I mean, from where you are, not without going back. You've, there's been doors that you haven't gone through, but uh, but you would have to go back through where you just came. 
Like if you were to go back to the, to the stable room, there was another door to the east. And there was also a door in that first room. There was a courtyard. There was a door to the northeast that you didn't uh, go through. The door so that all those guys, all, all those guys came through. That's right, where they came from, exactly. So there are other areas, but I mean, you certainly can go downstairs. It's just it's dark though, so you're going to need a torch or something, uh, unless you want to walk down the dark. I think I have a. Tw- Which is, I mean, totally. Well, I mean, you can walk down the dark if you want. I mean, that will make you less obvious, I guess, but. Uh, I can light a torch if you want, Tan. Yes, if you will follow behind us in the middle and, and illuminate the area. All right. I'll use one of my torches. Cool. You guys are making fast progress. Wow. Okay. Oh, actually, maybe this is a good time to take a, take a five-minute break. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. let's do that before we go. I mean, this is like a... a uh, well, and also it looks like a trip uh, needs to go anyways. All right, so let's do five, ten minutes. We have to say it all over again. <laughs> I, I don't remember where it stopped. Oh, when you went down to the basement. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so after the after they went to the basement and couldn't get through a couple locked doors, there was uh, they slayed a couple of snake men priests and found a hermit in the desert. Now they're coming back into Zamala. That's very much like a Conan book because they always start off with like two sentences it has all this information where you're like, "What? I want that story." <laughs> so yes, you um, you you're coming back into Zamala. Sorry, for people who are watching the the you guys missed that chunk of stuff. But I have a feeling they're going back there, so it's not going to matter. Uh, let's do this. Get my Zimbala map. I like this map, so I like to show it. All right. So yeah, you know, if you remember, uh, you know, you're coming in from over here on the, on the side. What, um, you know, somewhere deeper out in these ruins, uh, you you buried uh, some of the valuables, so you don't get looted again when you go back to see. Uh, Aramis. And uh, at this point, you know, you left in the morning and it wasn't that far, you know, it was like maybe five, six miles. So it's like maybe the middle of the day. Um, when you show up back into the, into Zimbala, uh, do you want to go right to Aramis's place or what's your plan? Oh yeah. Tam would want to go get this over with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you go, um, you, you show up and you, uh, you tell the guard at the door, I guess, what that you're there to see him. And just like before, you know, the, he kind of comes out, you know, somebody gets him and he kind of comes out and he sees you. Um, you see him say something to, to one of his men, and then he goes back inside, and that guy walks up uh, and relieves the two guards. So it's just him standing there with the two of you, with the group of you, and he says, uh, okay, we can't do this here, clearly. Have you got what you were supposed to get? Tan just points back at Bally in that big sack he's holding. Yeah. So he says, okay, there's a tavern called the Mermaid's Ear. It's, uh, and he kind of explains to you where it is. He says, uh, Armas will meet you there in an hour. And then he kind of nods and then he, he goes back. He walks back in and then pretty much as soon as he's like 15 feet in, the other guards come back and kind of take the door. I mean, they're not blocking you per se, but they, they're covering, you know. They're very well trained guards. Like uh, Bali is like holding up the sack, and as he walks away, Bali says, "Yeah, I've got it. I've got everything Artemis has coming to him." He slings that flat, uh, sack over his shoulder. When you do that, Tan looks at you and he goes, "I think it would be best that you let either me go alone, or you just let me and Pin go and handle this. You two probably should go back to the." Uh, Saturn's cup and rest. I believe this is going to have to take a little bit more diplomacy than than you two are usually uh, capable of doing. And he doesn't say it in a condescending way. He just says it in a straight business-like manner. Uh, Bali uh, looks to uh, to Uthred, and he will say in Viking, "The little man likes to talk a lot, doesn't he?" <laughs> Indeed. And uh, then he looks at Tan and just kind of like tosses him the sack. Thank okay. you. 
Pen, would you like to accompany me or do you want me to go by myself? Oh, I'll come with you. Okay. Yeah, you guys can definitely do that. So you make your way over to the to the mermaid's ear and it's kind of like uh it's similar to the Saturn's luck, except maybe a little bit a little more low rent. Um but it's uh, it's easy enough to find kind of a dark corner and get some pomegranate wine. And uh, after a little bit, uh, you see Armas come in. He's got uh, like a like an old uh, like dun colored you know uh, cloak on, like a like a like a peasant would wear or whatever. Kind of being low key. And he's got uh, clearly two guards with him, but they're not all with the spears and stuff, looking all fancy. They they look like they've stripped down to like leather armor, and they just have like. Uh, like scimitars on their their belts or whatever, so they're kind of more low key, and uh, and he kind of comes up and he looks around and then he they walks over and sits down at the table with you, and he puts up his hand and orders another pitcher of wine, and he says, uh, uh, "To be honest, I didn't think you'd come back. It was not very easy to do what we did, and there's something to even more surprise you the." Um, two priests that were at the temple when we arrived um should we say they were really some type of abominations after we beheaded them and then you know, i put my hand on the sack so, you know after we beheaded the priest they changed back into their true form which is some type of abomination of a snake-like creature you could say but here are the uh priest heads the robes and the holy symbols they were wearing. This is worse than I suspected. Snake men. They are quite evil. Hmm, I wonder what they could be up to. It's strange because normally from all the stories, snake men capture and take humans for experimentation to let the slaves eat them seems weird and odd. Oh, there were only the two? Yes, we spoke with one of these slaves there that um, was cowering down when we entered and he said there is sometimes up to six priests there, but most times there is only two and that is what was there was two. Hmm. Oh. Perhaps I'll need to send somebody to investigate once this is um, the Helios priest. He's kind of talking to himself. Is, perhaps we need to keep this under wraps. Uh, if too many people know about it, uh, uh, it may cause, uh, it might create a dangerous situation where people will go out there and they could hurt themselves. We don't want them to get hurt, right? We don't want them to. to I recommend you just stay away from that area. It's uh, very dangerous. Snake men are very dangerous. As you can see, you can probably tell. He looks at you and you can see that, you know, you've, you've been wounded. Yes, is, uh, I agree. And there's one thing, though, I need to present to you. I understand um, the reasons that you uh, took our valuables, as you did. But you have to also understand we are here with our employer who has disappeared and has not been able to make payment to us for our travels the past several months on the merchant caravan. We are in need of uh, corn to pay our daily expenses of staying into the, um, well, we are staying at the Saturn's Cup, as you probably already know that, but um, we need some type of uh, recompense to uh, make our expenses until we can find other employment here. Yes, 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 of course. Well, you know, I mean, what is money? Who, who really needs or cares for a coin? But I suppose uh, I could give you some. Uh, you should probably leave town, I think, on the next caravan going out. I can set you up with the good caravan leader. But until then, uh, hold on. We, did, we didn't take your valuables. What valuables? He kind of looks. Had, um, we had some uh, coin on ourselves when we were uh, taken. So... If you don't know anything about it, maybe you should speak to uh, one of your head guards then. They would probably know where it is. Hmm. He looks at the guard that's with him. Is one uh, of the guards the guy that hit me? Yep. I'm going to point at him. I'm going to go, I believe I would start with him. He seems to be the one who has all the knowledge of things. 
He looks at you and he says, uh, you're going to believe these? This trash? And Aramis says, oh, let's not have a scene here. Uh, okay. I mean, if you, maybe your valuables were lost. Uh, and he digs into his pouch and he pulls out uh, 20 gold coins and he puts them on the table like with his hand over it. And he says, uh, he looks around to make sure nobody's looking. And he kind of like pushes them towards you. He says, that should more than cover, I'm sure. Yes, that will more than cover expenses for us. And I have no problem with leaving this city on the next caravan. I would like to return to my hometown. Uh, this has not been a very uh, wonderful voyage for me, but hmm. we will stay around and, and be around uh, uh, for the next little bit until you do find us passage out of here. Yes, I will uh, see what I can do. One more question. What about our friend, the little one, I say, short little me, Zulia? Is she alive or did you kill her? Oh, I would never kill. But you must understand when somebody puts a knife to your throat, you cannot just let these things go. Oh, that is wise words indeed. So, where is she? Perhaps she'll be re reunited with her someday. And he kind of smiles. And they, they just finally bring over the pitcher of wine, but as soon as it arrives, he stands up. And he says, enjoy. And uh, I will send word to the Saturn's luck when I found you passage out. But I would definitely stay away from that palace. Very dangerous. And he, he just looks at the, the bag of heads and uh, then looks at one of the guards and the guard picks it up. The, not the guy that smacked you because he's eyeballing you. Um, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then they kind of walk out, <laughs> uh, you know, kind of backwards, like keeping an eye on you as they walk out into the street. And then you got a picture of pomegranate wine and, uh, and 20 gold pieces. Tan well, drinks about half of his, uh, half of a cup of it and he goes, it has a sour taste to me. Maybe it was the company itself. I believe we should return back to our friends. I'll toss back a cup. <laughs> I'll gulp it down. <laughs> yes, back to our friends and we can at least share this gold with them. Yeah, and but as you make, he'll give, give you the, uh, the 20 gold uh, pouch. He says, I'm going back into the desert uh, to retrieve the uh, things I hear. I will be back to the uh, cup momentarily. I'll just ask Tan, what do you think we should do, if anything, about Zulia? The best thing we can do is uh, we do not want to push our luck with this Aramis at this point. Uh, hopefully we will put enough dissent into him to know not to trust his uh, guards as much as he has been. But I uh, think we will give it time and if Azul does not show up in a few days' time, we um, we will have to um, try to find her, I guess. Okay. And I'm going to go back into the desert and retrieve my uh, hidden stuff. Perfect. Yeah, you definitely can do that. It's still the middle of the day, so it's, it's safe. You know, I mean, there's nobody going to give me any. There's, you see hardly any. If you see slaves at all, you're basically just seeing... Uh, you know, families and stuff out there. You're not seeing like any of the ones that you think were that were uh, uh, promoted, uh, being violent with you last time you were out there. Um, it occurred to me that I didn't write down what day it was. So four days before you spent the day there, but we'll, we'll guess what's the 27th. Okay. Well, you're almost through the seventh month. Look at you. Hmm. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. So you get back to Saturn's luck. Um, the other two are there. Uh, this is probably a good place to, we're almost at 11 anyways. Um, you guys can plan for whatever. And we'll figure out what happened to Zulia. Um, and also uh, Val. <laughs> or Val. <Belle. laughs> uh, we got to figure out what to do with her. So uh, yeah, well, we'll, we'll figure that out for next session. But uh, thanks guys. Excellent. You actually didn't end up captured. That's good. <laughs> <Or today. laughs> and kick some major butt to the, to the, to the, the snake men. <laughs>